Okay. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us in this webinar about monitoring mule applications with Datadog for maximum observability. A few notices before we start. Uh, we are going to have a time for, Q for a Q&A session at the very end of this presentation, uh, but anyways, feel free to ask any question that you have in the Q&A feature in the Zoom webinar. The presentations in this webinar are going to be recorded and available in the IO Connect Services Insights page within the, the next uh, 48 hours. My name is Victor Sosa, and I am the Director of Enterprise Integrations at IOConnect Services, and I am also the lead, the lead of our Mules of Practice. And joining me, we have Alex Vetrax, who is the product, product Manager of the Datadoc Marketplace team. Thank you so much for joining us, Alex. Thank you, Victor and IOConnect team, for having me on today. Um, this is our agenda for today. We're going to have a big overview about what is Datadog and the Marketplace. Uh, of course, an overview about what IO Connect, Connect Services is and what we what we do, and then we're going to jump into uh, into the observability for these mule uh, mule soft uh, assets. After that, I'm going to jump into a live demo uh, demonstrating this product, and like I said, at the very end, we are going to have this Q and A session. Um, without any further ado, uh, Alex, can you tell us a little bit about Datadog and what are the goals for the marketplace? Sure. So from a high level, Datadog is a monitoring and security platform for cloud applications. We bring together end-to-end -to -end traces, metrics, and logs to make our customers' applications, infrastructure, and third-party services entirely observable. This helps businesses secure the systems, avoid downtime, and ultimately ensures that customers are getting the best user experience possible. Datadog Marketplace uh, launched at our annual Dash conference in August 2020. And the main focus of the marketplace is to continue growing the Daydog ecosystem, where we extend the Daydog platform to monitor new technologies and data sources. The integration IO Connect built is actually a great example of the better together opportunities we see uh, with our technology partnerships. And the, uh, and the marketplace is a platform to deliver these solutions to our mutual customers. Uh, we understand our customers use a variety of tools and they can benefit from our ecosystem partners' expertise in a, in a number of different areas. If I were to summarize the goals of Datadog in the marketplace, it'd be to continue expanding our coverage of the technology stack while simplifying the way our customers can correlate and analyze their data to improve their services. Uh, the goals behind Datadog and marketplace are based on, on several trends we see in the monitoring space. As I mentioned, we've seen customers deploy a large number of DevOps tools. And the feedback we received is that customers desire to access all relevant data in one place through a single pane of glass. Alex, if a Datadog user has any questions regarding Marketplace, who should they contact and how? Well, the great thing about the Datadog Marketplace is that it can be entirely self-serve. Datadog users are able to discover and explore uh, a range of offerings in the Marketplace, including integrations, software, and services whatever best meets their use case. Uh, for example, if a customer is looking for the IO Connect integration, as you can see on the slide, they can visit the Datadog Marketplace and click into the Mule integration tile listing. Our goal is to make the experience as simple as possible uh, so that our customers can kick off a 14-day free trial, install the integration, and immediately benefit from out-of-the-box assets like custom dashboards and monitors, um, a few examples of which Victor will be showing in this presentation. Uh, that being said, if a customer has any questions, uh, Datadog sales and customer success teams are, are happy to help. Um, and additionally, IO Connect provides full support for their marketplace offering. So that's some of the, the basics of how the marketplace works. But I know it'd be valuable for us to get into more specifics on exactly how IO Connect monitors Mule. Thank you so much, Alex, for that introduction about Datadog and the Datadog marketplace. Uh, to continue with our agenda, let me talk a little bit about IO Connect Services before jumping into our product. IO Connect Services, we are a nearshore certified consultants and we are partners with Datadog, MuleSoft, and AWS. And as a matter of fact, we are an advanced consulting partner with AWS. Uh, we do services for many different industries and many different areas, such as enterprise integration, cloud technologies, DevOps, QA and testing, and as well as managed services. And we have different delivery models so that we can accommodate to your business needs. 
either uh, using uh, staff augmentation, project outsourcing, or simply consulting services. Uh, something that we like to uh, always mention is the for us education is the key not tool so it doesn't matter what kind of platform you have we know what the foundations are for that platform so we can basically navigate our waters in many different languages and platforms products etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is it about io connect services let me just jump quickly into our data doc mill integration we know that there is a need in the millsoft monitoring space um we have seen customers uh, dealing with, you know, monitoring aspects for all the Microsoft uh, assets, and that's why we we came up with this idea. This is our Datadoc Mule integration. This is an integration that is installed on top of the Datadoc agent, and with this integration, you can get 120 plus metrics, five out of the box dashboards nine out of the box monitors and a data dot connector for mule 4 this data dot connector is very useful for tracing uh you know transactions and events within your mule flows from end to end as i mentioned we give you 120 metrics plus a little bit more than that uh, and we covered these metrics from a range of different uh, features within the Anypoint platform, including the Cloud Hub applications, Mule runtimes, whether they are on-premise or in Cloud Hub, API manager analytics, uh, access management, exchange, object store. I mean, any feature that is in the Anypoint platform, we, we, we are covering here. Of course, we are continuously improving and adding more metrics and covering more products that Mulesoft is working on. Uh, you can identify these metrics very easily because we tag well we, we we mark every metric with the prefix prefix iaconnect.mulesoft.anypoint so whatever metric you can see in your metrics explorer and metrics summary uh, is ready for you to be used for your monitoring needs and just to give you a quick uh, start with the platform we give you these five predefined dashboards uh, these dashboard, dashboards are using the metrics that we are actually feeding, and this is basically just an example of how how you can use those metrics to create these fancy dashboards. Of course, you can extend these dashboards if you will. You can clone it and create a new one and extend it, or maybe you can start from scratch and create your own dashboards based on your on your business needs. These predefined dashboards cover five areas uh, that we design following uh, different roles or personas. We have the operations infrastructure, more related to how the infrastructure is looking from the perspective of CPU, memory, networking, network out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, operations uh, APIs intended as well for the operations team so that they can monitor the APIs activities, you know, requests, responses, errors, stuff like that. We have as well the resource allocation and usage intended for the operations teams as well. So that when uh, the operations teams can look at this uh, dashboard, they quickly know how the resources, the millions of resources are assigned and used. The development, uh, in the development, we have the optimizations, meaning that you can quickly just go into one application and see what are the spikes that you're looking at, uh, identify patterns, and maybe think about optimizations for you know future reference or future work. And last, we have the executives uh, cost optimization. This is built as uh, thinking in executives who need to know how much this is costing, basically. Um, and of course, we are not giving you a number about it. It's just to give a sense, an idea about, about the usage. We also give you the nine predefined monitors. These uh, monitors, uh, once they are configured properly, like, you know, uh, like the channel to which this monitor should go, uh, maybe uh, improving the message uh, or maybe filtering out whatever you need to do. This again, these are just just templates for you to um, to improve your monitoring needs, um, and they cover areas such as the memory consumption for on-premise uh, servers, applications, and cloud hub as well, CPU usage, stopped application and servers. And one very specific feature in the Mule world, which are the VM queues. VM queues are regularly used to decouple error handling uh, scenarios so that when you see an, an, a message flowing into this, uh, into this queue, well, you can uh, generate an, an alert based on that. And last, as I mentioned before, we provide you a Datadog connector for Mule 4 applications. And this Datadog connector is intended for APM, the application performance monitoring tool within Datadog. 
This allows you to do an end-to-end -end tracing of the mule flows, go, uh, thinking about when the, 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 the mule flow started and how it is, uh, is it finishing, as well as any other subflow that you might have in your uh, business logic. So that will help you to, you know, the limit, what are the scopes for specific operations, such as uh, just receiving a request, uh, and also like, okay, this is just a database call, this is just a REST call, et cetera, et cetera. So you can narrow that down. Any logs that you produce within these uh, traces, within these spans actually, uh, they are correlated to these spans. So that means that whenever you see a trace that for some reason is failed, you can see the logs that are correlated and narrow down your uh, troubleshooting uh, effort because you can see only those uh, logs and, and you have a, a delimited context in there. And now let me jump into the demo. So for this, well, this is the uh, usual APM dashboard. Uh, I, will, I wanna go just to the home, just to make sure that I'm actually in the home, but you know that um, Datadog is a very intelligent platform and it learns your, your usage patterns. So Datadog knows that I use APM a lot. The first thing I want to show you are those metrics. So first of all, I want to go to this metric explorer. And as I mentioned before, everything is tagged, well marked with the prefix ioconnect.mulesoft, mulesoft.com, sorry, mulesoft.anypoint. And then you will be able to see all the metrics that we are collecting as of now. Of course, you can select whatever metric you want in here, and then you're going to get some, some, some metrics, right? Um, this is fine, but in the end, you get more information. And this is actually where the power is. Uh, we tag every metric with the usual, the, the uh, tagging system, the intelligent tagging system that Datadog provides. Like for instance, let me just uh, filter this, this list and have a look at just the events hit. This events hit, hit is uh, the metric uh, for APIs, any API uh, event that is going through your API manager and the activity is being captured. And as you can see, this uh, metric um, is tagged with API ID, the usual API ID that you know uh, is created when you create a new API, application name, which is basically the application uh, that you can correlate with in, in Exchange, asset display, where that uh, request is coming from, in this case is the United States. Uh, environment IDs, you know the usual any point environment IDs, the instance ID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So as you can see, these metrics are tagged so that when you, whenever you have any needs to correlate different metrics, uh, you can do them do that by correlating this tagging system. For instance, you can know uh, if if you get here. Uh, in this case, for instance, we have this policy template name. Uh, this means that this uh, this API um, is tied to a policy, in this case, the client ID and informant. So in the end, I can go back to the API manager and look to the uh, contracts and maybe correlate the contracts of this API based on the policy, right? Because you are capturing the client ID. So that's the power of this uh, intelligent tagging system. It doesn't matter if you don't get the information you need in one metric, you can correlate with a different one and not just one, maybe with a few others. Next, I'm going to jump into my uh, dashboard list. And in my dashboard list, you can see that I have here the five uh, um, dashboards that I was speaking about. Let me just first jump into the infrastructure one. This infrastructure is meant for the operations teams in where they need to look at you know, the entire uh, health of the infrastructure for your mule applications, your mule, mule, mule assets, right? The first thing you will notice here is that we have a critical section. This critical section shows you the applications and servers that for some reason, reason they are stopped, right? Or maybe they have errors. You can see this uh, widget here. Um, so we feed Datadog with this kind of information and these specific widgets are actually uh, fed by the monitor that we have, the, like the, that I mentioned before, the stopped applications, stopped servers, or errors. So that means that as of now, these three assets, they have some kind of problem and someone in the operations team need to jump into these alerts and find out what the problem is. So as soon as you open this dashboard, you will see if there is any problem. Let me just collapse this. The next part is 
uh, the Cloud Hub section. In the Cloud Hub section and for on-premises services servers as well, we show you the infrastructure information, which is the memory, CPU, network in and network out. And specifically for the mule, sorry, for the Cloud Hub uh, applications, we give you those messages that are queued and in flight. These messages are the BMQs that I was speaking before. Unfortunately, this capability is only available at Cloud Hub. It is not available on on-premises servers. One thing that I want to mention is that as of now, uh, these metrics that you are seeing here, well, these widgets, uh, these are actually showing the aggregated values of all the uh, applications that you have. Nevertheless, uh, you have at the top of this window, you have the template variables that you can use to narrow down your scope. Like for instance, if I want to open, let's say this API tester application, I can see the metrics specific for this tester, right? I can expand the timeline for this and you can see that uh, I, I might probably get a little bit more information. Let me just expand it to maybe 30 minutes. And you can see that, okay, this is coming from a historical point of view, all these other applications. At this point, let me just select uh, a new API. I'm sorry, this one is not actually working. Let me see, bachelor, no, this is not going to work. Oh, this is actually working. So you can see that if you select any other application, the widgets are actually reflected uh, based on the, on the selection that you just made. Let me collapse this one. And at the very end, you will see this, right? This on-premise section is, uh, is for the on-premises applications. And th th this section work exactly the same as the Cloud Hub one. It's showing the same information, memory, uh, CPU, and any network in and out, as you can see here. And well, this is basically it for the infrastructure side. Now, let me open the, our, the APIs view, the APIs dashboard. This is a little bit more comprehensive in the sense that it provides a lot of information in terms of the API activity. Uh, and on this regard, the first thing you will notice is that it's divided in different sections. So the first section, of course, is well, uh, the headers in where you can see the, uh, the agents that are up and running. At this point, I know that I have three agents running and the three agents are complying to the license. So these will uh, give you a quick sense of whether your agents are running or not and what the problem might be. Um, and well, as part of the headers, you can see that you get like the number of requests and the average response based on the time frame that you have specified here in the timeline. The next section is the overview section. This is basically all API requests that you have done. Uh, well, the, the API uh, and uh, events are captured. Um, it doesn't matter whether they are failed or successful. It's just everything aggregated. So at this point, you can see that, okay, I have a maximum of eight requests per second for this uh, uh, asset, which is the DAPM demo. And there is another one for the orders asset, right? Okay, so this is kind of simplistic. You can see the same for average response and total fail requests. Scrolling down, you will be able to see the request section. This is a specific to other, well, this is as well all the requests like in the overview, but the difference is that now the widgets are broke down in a different way. Like for instance, the API instance, which the API instance ID is the usual API ID that is, uh, you know, specified in the auto discovery feature in the mill applications. So that's what this is telling you. You get to see as well a, a breakdown about the HTTP verbs that are being used, maybe requests by response size uh, or, or maybe uh, re request size, as well as you can see on the left, on the right, you can see any kind of a response code if you have any different, like for instance, we have uh, 200, we have uh, 200 for another instance, we have 401 and we have one for 502. So, um, this can be a little bit helpful in terms of, okay, all applications are probably working fine, some others are not. For those that are, you know, having some kind of failures, well, you have this fail request section in where this is exactly the same information as you can see here, but this is dedicated all to uh, fail requests only. Um, and in, in this section of the requests, there is a table that I actually like because this can give you like a quick view about the API activity that you're having um, in the sense that each of these uh, rows in the, in the table is basically activity in 
and a specific uh, resource path and application. And you can see that breakdown based, for instance, in the application code, maybe the verb, uh, instance ID. And at the end of the table, you can see a, a quick summary about it. Um, this is just informational. It's not like, you know, like a quick prompt about whether you need to do something or not. It's just quick information. And last, you get the APIs and client applications section, in which basically these are just top 10 lists showing you the most used APIs or the most failed APIs, the most active clients, and the most failed clients. Like, for instance, in this case, you can see that I have a client with no name. And you can see here that I have a 401, meaning that there is an unauthorized uh, access to this resource and we don't have an application name. So that will that, that helps me to understand that maybe someone is trying to use this service without any kind of authorization. Next, I will jump into the development uh, dashboard. And this development dashboard is pretty much like the, um, like the infrastructure dashboard um, uh, but this one does not have that critical section. And the idea behind removing that is because usually developers, they are not uh, thinking whether the applications are working correctly. That's usually the DevOps team or infrastructure team or operations team uh, responsibilities. Um, from the developer's perspective, they are uh, they, they need to care about whether the application is performing well or not. Like for instance, again, you can see this uh, templates here, you can select any application that you have here. Like for instance, let me see if I get, can get something from this. No, I cannot because it is not reporting this one. Uh, let me see this. Uh, oh, I'm pretty sure I should have something. Uh, dev, okay. So we got one of, one of the applications in the development environment that is actually uh, reporting these metrics. And at this point, well, everything is under uh, normal thresholds, like for instance, we have 2%, close to 2% usage, and maybe close to 500 megabytes in consumption of this memory. However, if you can, if, if, if you were to see some kind of a spikes, then that means that at some point the application is behaving probably in a weird way, and we need to take a look at this application and identify why this application is having this kind of uh, spikes. So that's the idea behind this dashboard. And you can see that, well, in the end, we have a pretty similar layout in the on-premises section uh, with the same philosophy as the infrastructure uh, um, dashboard. Uh, the next one that I want to show you, so the first three that I show you uh, were related to operations, whether they was, the, you know, infrastructure-wise or maybe API activities. This next one is about the resources and how these resources are being used in your infrastructure in your mule infrastructure. And this is uh, used by the operations teams because they usually need to know how many resources they have available to support more applications, right? Um, at this point, what is required is uh, you need to configure these three templates here, template, template variables. So once you know the organization ID or maybe a production environment ID, stuff like that, uh, you can just quickly save that, saving that selection as a view. In my case, I already have that configured already in this environments config. And you can see that it is auto-populated. So at this point, it is saying that, okay, now uh, I have the correct values here. And the first thing this is telling me is that, okay, in my production environment, I have 0 0.6 vCores assigned. And this is not reassigning any vCores to a child suborganization. So this is the first six uh, tiles telling me how many I have in this and this if this environment is um, um, reassigning to a suborganization. Let me collapse this and the next part is as follows. This is the the, the, the view in where you can actually know how many resources you have available. So let me explain this a little bit. In the previous uh, um, section, the organization vCores, that was the resource location, meaning um, in the sense that you know how many you have assigned to this organization if, if you are reassigning. So you can, uh, you, you know where those are actually assigned to. The next sections are telling you how those are used and how many you have available. Like for instance, for this uh, production uh, environment, we have actually used 0.5, but we are not using 0.1. And remember that in the total that we got assigned is 0.6. So the math uh, matches in this case. 
This is the same philosophy, the same idea for all the other tiles in here. You can see the sandbox design. And if you are reassigning to any sub organization, okay? This same philosophy actually applies for other resource assets that cost money, such as the VPNs, VPCs, load balancers, the static IPs. And uh, for these uh, resources, we can also know whether they are actually reassigned or not. And, uh, you, you know, how much, uh, how many of these resources are assigned to this organization and reassigned to, this, uh, to the child organizations. Um, let me jump quickly into the last dashboard, which is the cost optimization. And this cost optimization dashboard is designed thinking on executives who need to know how the resources are actually used. So as in, in the previous dashboard for resource and allocation and usage, uh, in this dashboard, we have to configure as well these IDs. Uh, fortunately, again, we have this saved view here that you can configure that as well. And once this is saved, all, uh, all the widgets are going to be updated. The first thing I want to mention is here. You can see that we have the application and server failures. The idea is that in the first widget, you can see how long in a percentage uh, a value, how long an application or a server uh, well, in this case, an application uh, has been stopped because in the end, applications that are stopped are costing money to the organization. And the idea is that executives who, you know, oversee the cost aspects in the business, they need to allocate money uh, or any kind of budget to react to these kind of failures. Everything costs money. And it, it will tell you as well what is the application that for some reason is stopped. In this case, it is this demo EKS application, which I know it is stopped in our environment exactly for these purposes. And the next part is uh, the application, uh, the errors of in applications that are deployed on premises. And as well, this is going to tell you, okay, how much, uh, how much time this is um, failing or presenting some kind of errors. And you can see that, well, we have this batch advertising application that is failing quite a lot. So again, the idea is that uh, executives can take, uh, you know, some budget to, uh, you know, overcome the problem and maybe fix it later. Um, the next section is actually grouped into blocks of three, three tiles per uh, row. So like, for instance, we have the used beakers in production, the not used because in production, and the uh, time, the, the time series, you know, showing the, the the trend in how these resources are being used. So, for instance, uh, right now we know that we're using 0.5 uh, vehicles. This is like the, uh, as you can see, this is the same number that we shown for the resource allocation and usage dashboard. But 0.1 is not being used. That means that for some reason it is not used, probably because you don't have any more de uh, deployments happening. Uh, uh, in the previous days. Uh, however, you have 0.1 available, right? The real problem here is if you see that the green line is going down, meaning that the production vehicles are not being used and the uh, red line is going up, meaning that they are not being used, then you might have a problem uh, in how these resources are being used. So the executive might get in a, a conversation with uh, the technical leadership to ensure why those resources are not used. And, and, and more importantly, why are they being deprovisioned, right? Why? Because you're paying for these resources and you are not using them. So eventually you will have to engage in conversations with you know, your technical leadership or maybe with Milsov, I don't know, whatever it is that it makes sense to the executives to uh, overcome the situation. This uh, idea applies for uh, all these aspects, like I said, uh, vehicles in production, sandbox, and design, as well as uh, VPNs, VPCs, static IPs, load balancers, premium connectors, and object store requests. All these um, resources that I'm showing, that, that, that I'm telling you about in this uh, in this dashboard, these are the ones that cost money in your license entitlement. So that is the important part of why having an eye on these kind of metrics. Next, uh, I will show you a little bit about um, AP, uh, about the monitors, actually. So let me just jump into the monitors. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have nine out of the box monitors. You can see that some of them have been triggered. Some of them are okay, which is which is good. This is ultimately the the uh, the goal for the operations teams. Uh, see everything in green, right? 
Uh, for instance, let me just jump into this one. Uh, this is the uh, alert for applications that are deployed in Cloud Hub and for some reason that these are stopped. Let me just click on it. And you can see that there is uh, some kind of history here, right? Like, okay, this has happened actually quite a lot. So let's figure out what the problem is. Um, you can see that, okay, I know that for instance, this API tester, uh, IR, IRVK, uh, something application is failing quite a lot. So we have to take a look at it. And we have another one, which is the demo EKS, which are exactly the same two that I showed you before in that uh, uh, critical section in, in, in both the uh, infrastructure and the cost, op uh, cost optimization dashboards. So there, there you go, you get to see the history about uh, what has triggered this uh, dashboard and some other uh, graphs like the evaluation graph, et cetera, et cetera. And for instance, this is the events that uh, the event trend, trend line that uh, that these uh, alerts uh, have created, you know, you're gonna get one of these events every time the alert and an alert is triggered. And uh, one thing that I want to show you is that in the end, uh, this is pretty much customizable. So um, these are basically just the uh, standard metrics that we have seen. Of course, you can configure these metrics on whatever way you want. You can specify your own thresholds, your own recoveries, the, the message that you want to you know, send to your operations team, and eventually the channel um, that will be notified about this monitor, this alert. All monitors have the same structure. So basically learning one, will, uh, you will be able to you know, go ahead and create the other and configure the other ones. And now let me jump into the traces view. This is the APM section. Um, application performance monitoring is a very useful uh, feature in Datadog because it can help you to monitor um, the internal activity within your applications. You can instrument your applications to show you this kind of information, basically telling you how much this application or this flow is taking to execute end to end. Uh, from the mule perspective, the idea is that you can instrument your mule flow from the inbound to the outbound stage, as well as any interaction with any external systems such as databases, um, I don't know, REST services, sub services, files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the idea here is that this uh, window will show you the, uh, here in the right the latency based on uh, on the percentiles group. 50%, 75%, 90%, or whether you have something in the 99%. The, the uh, bigger the, the percentage group, the better, because that means that your applications, your APIs are going, you know, uh, are, are behaving really, really fast. That is in the end the objective. Uh, and of course, you can get to see a, a few other items, such as the requests, the volume of those requests in any uh, given period of time, as well as, well, if you have any errors and that the volume for those errors. Um, in this view, uh, you get to see all the traces that are created. And these traces can give you information about when they happened, what was the service that created this trace, what is the resource, uh, usually in the, you know, in the rest world, that is the URI in your, in your endpoint, how long that trace is taking, the method in case that you are uh, over HTTP or maybe for some others that are not doing anything related to HTTP, well, this is empty as you can see here and the status code. Again, this is whether uh, you're using HTTP or not. And it will tell you, as you can see here, the status code, whether it is 200, 201, 202, 400, 404, 500, 504, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you configure here. And one important part that, uh, that comes with APM is that you get to see uh, of course, how long this trace is, is taking to complete, because you can see right in here that you get that uh, that uh, that uh, time, that latency. In this case, it is 55.8 milliseconds, which means that it is really fast. And you get to see any kind of uh, children uh, spans within this trace. So we have one root tracing here, which is basically the entry and the exit of this trace. But as I mentioned before, uh, you can also scope the interactions with other systems. Like for instance, I can tell you right away that this trace is, this is the entry point for this API. And this API is actually making a request to another resource, which is an external REST API. 
in these traces, you get to inject a few information about what the context is for this uh, trace. Like for instance, I injected this correlation ID, which you know in the mule world is the unique ID to identify any event going into the mule. Um, I injected the environment, some details about the HTTP request, and well, this is uh, information about the Java thread. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, any uh, trace, any log that you produce within that trace is automatically correlated to that trace. So when you click on these logs, you get to see the context only for that thread, sorry, for that trace. If you click on any of the logs in there, it will take you directly to the logs uh, a, a, a platform within Datadog. And as you can see, it will filter out all the logs to only those that are uh, correlated by that trace ID. That's the way it is correlated in the Datadog platform. And you get to see other kind of information such as the context map, uh, some timestamps, um, service levels, uh, you know, uh, loggers, et cetera, et cetera. Something that is kind of related to the, uh, to, to the log4j um, uh, content. And as well, if you correlate these logs, you can correlate the, uh, the trace right away. So you can see that the synchronization is back, it's, a, it's actually a two-way binding between the two features in Datadog, which is kind of cool. Now, going back to this one, um, there is something that I would like to mention. Like for instance, I would like to filter this out uh, based on the status code and I know that I have uh, some 502. Yes, I have a few 502 errors here. You can see that these are marked in, 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 in red. Uh, so let's take a look at it. Like for instance, let me take the second one, which is 130 milliseconds. It seems, uh, sorry, the third one is 140. So let me just click on here. Uh, it's the one that is taking the longest. You can see that the trace is marked as an error based on this uh, 502 status code and you get to see what which is the span that is actually producing this error so this is telling me that the span is on existing host 404 but the important thing here is this when you go to the log section you get to see what the problem is because the log is marked as an error and you can see that the log is marked with the red bar here if you uh, log your errors properly and meaningful, you get to, to see the information uh, or the context information of what went wrong. So at this point, this is telling me, okay, this is an error in uh, in this uh, um, call, this HTTP call, it's a gate to this uh, endpoint, which turned out to be a 504, 502. So, okay, uh, I know that this, uh, this endpoint does not exist. So, okay, for me right now, it is fine to fail, but nevertheless, for you, this will give you the context that you need in case that you need to do your troubleshooting. In my case, it is like, okay, this is wrong, obviously, so I need to fix this endpoint. So this is the idea behind uh, getting you this kind of visibility into the traces and the logs. This is more related to the application development stage and of course, QA as well. So now, some of you are gonna ask, well, okay, how do I get this? How can I instrument my application so that it can show me all these traces? And the answer is very simple. We provide you with that Datadog connector, as I mentioned before. This Datadog connector uh, is well integrated into the AnyPoint Studio, so you can see it as, a, as any regular uh, connector in the palette. In this connector, you get to see the activate span, create span, finish span, finish all, logger, and update span. These are the, the operations that you can perform and on uh, using this connector. And the idea is that as soon as you get your uh, your request in your Mule application, your Mule API, or whether your uh, Mule event is activated by a scheduler or something like that, you uh, you create this create span operation, right? And in the create span operation, you will be asked for a few information such as the connector configuration, which is a global configuration. And let me just show you that. This global configuration will ask you to connect to the host in your Datadog agent that has APM enabled, the port that it is listening to, the service name and the environment, right? This is just global configuration elements so that you can connect to the APM server and then send these traces. Let me go back to the flow and open again this properties view. So once you configure that, you get to do something like, you know, okay, I want to give this span a name. 
whether this has a parent or not, but in this case, this is the root span, so I'm, I'm not gonna give it a parent. And the important thing in this view is this, all the tags. As I mentioned before, uh, in data you can uh, tag all your metrics, and this applies as well for, uh, for traces. And in this case, it will allow you to give more insights and context about this specific event in the mill flow. So like, for instance, uh, I mentioned before that I'm injecting the correlation ID that you can see here and other HTTP uh, information, such as the uh, status code, whether there is an error or not, or maybe uh, what the span type is, right? And you get to inject other HTTP related information, such as the, uh, the HTTP method or the URI path. In the case that this is just a background worker, well, of course, you will have this as a, you know, uh, as a blank value and that doesn't matter at all. It's just the way that it is presented to Datadog. However, the important part here is this, the tax section because it can show you uh, information about the context of for this flow. Next, you have the logger. This is just like the regular logger in, 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 uh, in Mule. The only difference is that we are, uh, you know, correlating with the span to which you want to correlate this log. Once you specify this span name, then you can basically write whatever message you want, whatever level or category that you want. This is usual log4j logging. But the important one, the important part is this one, right? What is the span name to which I'm correlating this log? So whatever log is produced uh, in here, uh, it's going to be automatically correlated. And that is true for any uh, log that I have in here. For instance, I'm logging this server and you can see that I'm logging that as well, associated to an inspired name with, with a different uh, description or a different message, as well as the level. Um, at the very end, um, for instance, in this one in the error handler, at the very end, I can mark whether the span is, uh, is for some reason failed and if it is failed, I can specify the status code. As a matter of fact, I can specify this status code for any other, uh, for any other um, uh, span type, right? Like for instance, I could see that probably if I can specify not 200, I would say like 201. 200 is the default. That's why I don't need to specify it. And well, uh, all this configuration uh, needs to be done in the mule applications. Uh, so there is nothing that you need to do on the Cloud Hub side. Uh, it's everything on your new application. That means that you have to include this instrumentation in your uh, planning, in your development phase. And well, this is pretty much about the demo. Let's jump into the Q&A section. Okay, I can see that we have a few questions in the Q&A, so I'm just going to read them out. Um, so uh, we have a couple for Alex. Uh, the question says, uh, what types of companies do you see transacting through Datadog Marketplace? Thanks, Victor. Uh, yeah, so, so Datadog has a diversity of marketplace offerings um, for application performance monitoring, as Victor was showing with this Mule integration for networking, SaaS monitoring, um, and a number of other products that Datadog offers. So with Datadog's 14,000 plus customers, the range of transactions we see in the marketplace vary both by size and industry. Uh, one great thing about the marketplace though, is that we support private offers. This allows for flexibility for things like custom payment terms and volume discounting um, you know, that, can, that can fit your needs. Uh, for example, we've seen contract terms ranging from on-demand usage up to three-year commitments. Um, so from installation to pricing, we want to help meet the use cases of small and medium businesses, uh, as well as, as enterprise customers. Okay, thank you so much, Alex. We have another question about the marketplace. What other types of data can marketplace integrations use? In addition to the metrics and traces uh, that we viewed today, our integrations can also use the Datadog agent um, or our Datadog REST APIs to submit a number of other data types, uh, logs, events, incidents, um, and as well as similar to the IO Connect offering, partners can then include out of the box assets uh, from custom dashboards to those recommended monitors. And, and the goal here is that our customers can then quickly start benefiting from the integration right at the time of installation, right when they click install. Um, so in short, 
you know, we're, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for partners and customers to integrate uh, with the monitoring data that is most important to them. Okay. Uh, another question, how is it different than platform metrics API provided by MuleSoft? Um, as a matter of fact, we are retrieving all these metrics. We are collecting all these metrics from the AnyPoint API, AnyPoint Platform API. The difference from the AnyPoint monitoring uh, solution in AnyPoint is that uh, AnyPoint monitoring is uh, basically related to runtime metrics such as application or API's activity. However, um, they are lacking as of now the visibility for other features such as access management or exchange, which as you know, guys, um, this is something that is uh, highly advised to, uh, to monitor if you have a C4E, a Center for Enablement, or maybe you, you are planning to create a Center for Enablement uh, team in your organization, because in the end, these metrics will give you the KPIs that are you know, outlined by the C4E. So from that perspective, uh, how is it different from the AnyPoint Platform API uh, metrics? Well, we are actually using the same information. The difference is we collect all those metrics, we curate them, and we feed them into Datadog. Uh, as of now, uh, we haven't seen any other way to take all these metrics and feed them into Datadog right now. I hope this answers the question. Um, we have another question. My company is all cloud. Will the Datadog Mule integration collect the metrics from my applications and servers running on Cloud Hub? The answer is yes. Uh, the Datadog Mule integration actually takes uh, metrics from, like I said, from the AnyPoint platform. And the AnyPoint platform collects metrics from, uh, from your on-premises servers as well as the Cloud Hub uh, applications. And it will collect metrics for your infrastructure as well, as, well as uh, other operational aspects such as the VMQs or whatever sort of stuff like that. Um, the only difference is that uh, you don't have to install any kind of agent in Cloud Hub. As, uh, as a matter of fact, the Datadog in agent is installed separately in your own, I don't know, AWS uh, BPC or maybe your uh, Azure uh, VNet or maybe your physical data center. So it is completely separate from Cloud Hub. Uh, we have a question, can I clone the out of the box dashboards or even create my own uh, for my own needs? Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, well, we provide these dashboards just as an example of what you, you can do. Um, but in any ways, you can create all the, uh, you can create all, all the dashboards that you need uh, for your monitoring uh, business needs, of course. Uh, and it can go just not just uh, from the operational perspective, but also to other, any other kind of personas as I showed you in, in those five out of the box dashboards. Is Datadog Connector available for Musa gover uh, Government Cloud? The answer is yes. Um, because in the end, we provide you with this Datadog connector that you can install uh, in, your, uh, in your own exchange, making it available to your organization. And then you can just uh, you know, point your uh, Maven projects to your own exchange and download the, 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 the connector uh, in, in, your, in your application. So yeah, you can use it. Um, we have one last question as of now that says, how can I trace my API activity in the mill applications? Well, as I mentioned before, you get two options here. One of them is using the API metrics that we collect from any point platform, which will give you uh, information around the request and the response perspective. So it's basically um, like a black box from the uh, API implementation point of view. So it's just entry and exit. That's what the API metrics are going to give you, as well as other details such as the API manager, SLA tiers, uh, contracts, policies, or maybe some kind of alerts if you have anything com configured. Uh, the second option is instrument your applications with the APM connector, so that in this way you can uh, inject any kind of uh, context contextual information that you need in those traces so that later can help you to troubleshoot those problems. Um, and well, uh, we get another question. Uh, how can I reach the marketplace page in the Datadog application? Sure, I can take that one. Victor, I'm not sure if you can share no, no, your screen back to the demo. Yeah, sure, okay. if, if you'd like to pull up on your side, uh, back in the Datadog app, um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you would go to the integrations tab 
on the left-hand side, go to the marketplace. And then if you were to hover over on the right-hand side, the mule integration, you'll see the tile that we've been speaking about today. If you click inside, uh, there'll be an overview section, a data collected section that talks about the 120 plus metrics uh, that Victor covered. And then ultimately there's a pricing section uh, which you can use uh, to agree to the end user license agreement and kick off a 14 day uh, completely free trial in the bottom right hand corner. Um, and this is a way for you to, to test this out. Of course, feel free to ask the IO Connect team or the Datadog team any questions you have. Uh, we wanna make sure that you're you get up and running quickly and, and find the value in this integration. Right, and in addition to that, Alex, because we have a second part in that question, which uh, it says how to reach the pricing path to kick off a 14 day free trial, which we already did. Uh, but in addition to the answer is that uh, the, the, the cost is $350 per production vehicle. And I want to make this distinction because you know that in the new world, you have the sandbox vehicles and you have the production vehicle. So it doesn't matter how many you have in sandbox, we only price on, on the production vehicles. I hope this helps answer the question. Um, and uh, I guess this is it. I don't see any other question coming through. Okay. And well, uh, we are uh, actually close to the top of our hour. So thank you so much for joining this webinar. As I mentioned before, this session is recorded and we will make it available in the next 48 hours in our IO Connect Services Insights page. Uh, thank you so much and have a good day.